In a world of ours filled with sins and sorrows, diseases and pains, poverty and shame, will you be found lacking in sin? In the book of Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says, In such an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. A little moment from now, he that shall come will come. He will not delay. Who we'll spring surprises on that final? Your life is time. You never can care when you will expire. Will you miss the rapture if he comes today? Is your name written in the book of life? If not, this is your time to repent. Rapture culture. Lessonless cannot take you anywhere. Some of you are still here today, not because you are supposed to be here. Listeners has tied you to one place. Where you are now is not where you are supposed to be. There are many opportunities you have missed because the person that was observing you that wanted to do something for you said, no, this one, no. This one cannot do it. He leaves you and goes to somewhere else. So while you are praying for God to answer your prayer, your laziness is the demon that is working against your growth. Many of us here, what is hindering our answers is not the devil, it is our laziness. You don't seem to understand. Jesus gave talents to three groups of persons. The one he gave five, the other he gave three, the last he gave one. Do you remember that story? The one that he gave five, Worked hard with the five. Worked hard with the five. And what happened? He gained five more talents. Is that correct? The one he gave three. Worked hard with the three. And he gained three more talents. The one he gave one was supposed to work hard with the one. But what did he do? He buried, he dug the ground and buried it neatly. I said, don't mind this man. He wants to reap where he did not sow. Somebody gave you one talent, you say he did not sow. And when the master came, the one that had five, he rewarded. The one that had more three, he rewarded. The one that had one, and didn't multiply the one because of laziness. What did he say? Say, thou wicked and slothful. You know the word slothful means lazy. Thou wicked and slothful servant. If God ranks slothfulness and wickedness together, so you can imagine that you are wicked to yourself when you are lazy. You are wicked to yourself when you are lazy. If God has given you two hands and two legs and you don't have a job yet, there is something you can do with those hands. Is somebody with me? You are a young lady, you are a young boy. God has given you two hands and two legs. There is no job, no paid employment. There is something you can do with those heads. Don't keep your hands idle because you'll be weaker to yourself. So nature number one is that somebody that is diligent works hard. Amen. Nature number two, somebody that is diligent is painstaking. A diligent man is painstaking. Because in the process of working hard, there are going to be so many challenges. Are you aware of that? It is good I tell you the truth at the beginning of the year. So that you can face the year with diligence. And any man or woman in this church that confronts 2019 with diligence, 2019 will deliver his treasure to you. It is painstaking in the process.
process of doing your work. A lot of people are going to mock you. Bear it. Some would give you some challenges. Bear it. Certain things will happen to you that will tend to discourage you. Bear it. Sometimes you go for your business. Do you know how times you can hawk from morning to evening? What you will sell may not be worth it. Hello? Sometimes you can open your shop from morning to evening. Waiting for buyers. Waiting for patronage. The change you brought from the house, you have used it to eat. And sometimes you didn't even bring any money because you are very hopeful that from your first sales in the morning, you will eat. So the only food you ate that day, maybe you will have eaten it on credit. From that morning, you have been buying from because there was no sales that day. And the only person that entered your shop provoked you so much. After coming, it will price this and price this and price this and give you ridiculous price. Even when you decided to say, okay, this one is even ridiculous, let me at least sell something a day. Even if the profit is just too naira, let something leave my shop today. Come and pay. Say, no, this is inferior. It's fake. What do you want? Look at it. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking it down by 20 naira again. What do you do? Do you get angry and say, please leave my shop? You are a wizard. You are a witch. Get out from here. These are the people that go to bring bad luck to people. You are a bad luck to me. No, 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 no. You are making a mistake, brother. You must be painstaking. When that person leaves, tell yourself that is not the blessing God has ordained for you that day. Bless the person and tell the person it is well with you. You see, every response you give to a negative situation can become a foundation for a positive action in your life. That person that came might just be a temptation. Can you imagine Jesus? I'm sorry, Peter fished all night. He died all night. He had no single catch of fish. The next day he was washing his net to go home. Jesus said, come, I want to use your boat. If you were Peter, what would you do? The fisherman left his house. He didn't sleep. Went through the whole storm and trouble of the water. And he was living in his front. At that time, Peter was frustrated. Peter was bad. Peter was angry. He, 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 he was so disappointed. His mood was sad. In that state, Jesus came. Was he the only one that owned a boat in that place? Why did Jesus decide to use the boat of somebody that didn't make any profit, that didn't catch any fish? There are many fishermen. Peter was not only the fisherman in the Sea of Galilee. Why did Jesus decide to use that of Peter? Because there is a critical exam you must pass for you to enter the next class waiting for you. I pray for somebody here. When your examination shall come, you shall pass excellently well. And your promotion shall not be denied you. The Lord shall deliver your promotion to you. The Lord shall deliver your increase to you. If you have a shout, hallelujah. Peter asked the exam. His attitude was right. A diligent man is painstaking. You bear the pain. Peter said, no, ma no problem, master. Have my boat. Is it not a boat? Have it. After all, this fish could not enter. And my master wants to use it. It's an honor. Not being angry. Where were you when I didn't catch anything? Jesus finished using the boat. He didn't perform the miracle before he used the boat. He finished using the boat. At the point of exit, when Peter thought it is now time to go home, nothing more again. At the point of exit, when Peter was already folding his net and said, okay, it is over for today. At the point when Peter was saying it is over, Jesus said, Peter, go back to the same sea and cast your net in the other side. Launch into the deep. Peter was saying it is over. It is not yet over except God says it is over. And anything that appears over in your life in 2018, the Lord shall revisit it in 2019. That amen did not help matters. 
every project, every expectation, every miracle that you believe God for last year that appeared to not have happened this year, the Lord shall reawaken the miracle. The Lord shall visit that agenda again. The Lord shall visit that matter again. The Lord shall visit that position again. The Lord shall visit that expectation again. The Lord shall visit your son again. The Lord shall visit your marriage again. The Lord shall visit your job again. The Lord shall visit your business again. If you are still there, shout hallelujah. There's going to be a fresh visitation. Peter was about to go home. Brother, I said to you, you shall not go home like that this year. No, no, no. You don't understand me. I said to you, brother, you shall not go home like that this year. Sister, you shall not go home like that this year. Something must happen in your favor. Something must happen to your celebration. You will not go empty. You will not fold your net in emptiness. That net shall be spread again. Fish shall enter your net again. Fish shall enter your net again. The word of God shall control them. The word of God shall call them. The word of God shall bring them together. If you are still there, shout hallelujah. Don't write me off. Don't sign me out. Peter was about living. The master said, no. You can't live like that. You are a diligent fisherman. You toiled all the night. You didn't catch anything. And this morning, you were not even angry that I wanted to use your boat that didn't produce anything. Not that you honored me in spite of your frustration, in spite of your pain, in spite of your trouble. Peter, go back to the same river. Some of you, you are going back to the same business. The business, you didn't profit much last year. Listen to me, oh. The business, you didn't profit much last year. That could hardly keep, oh, Katama Sukutaha. This year, the Lord is opening an extraordinary door for somebody. That same business you did last year, as you employ diligence this year, extraordinary door shall open for somebody here. And no man shall shut that door against you. Because when God opens, no man shall shut. The Lord is setting before you an open door in 2019. If you are still there, raise your voice and shout hallelujah. The same business, don't run away. Don't run away. The same business. The same business. The same job. Last year wasn't much to talk about. But this year, when you launch into the deep, after diligent search, the fish that will come out will be such that you will need people to help you pull them into the boat. It therefore means that this year, your problem will be how to manage your customers that will be coming to you. Okay. Did somebody hear what I said? I said this year, I speak in the name of the God that sent me to this airport one church. Your problem shall be how to manage the pool of customers that shall come to you. Say that to me three times. Two. Yes, is painstaking. Don't be quick to murmur. Don't be quick to complain. How can you enter your shop? Say, so I don't come again. No. I hope today not going to be like yesterday. Huh? People in the past here, so did they see my shop? Hmm? I don't know what I do this with Polo. God, did they see them so? Some of your prayers point their murmuring. You the mom say you they pray. When you finish mom, then God will come out to hear. He will listen to somebody that is serious. Because he has over 8 billion people to attend to in one second. 
When you have the opportunity to talk to God, you, you start blabbing. He quits and listen to a more serious person. When you open your shop, open your mouth in prophecy and declare the word of God over their business. Tell them the word of God says through the mouth of the servant of God, this same business shall make me happy this year. Therefore, my business, you are under a divine mandate to prosper my life. You can only make me smile. You will not give me pain. Doors are opening for me. You shall serve my interest. You shall change my status. Business, the hand of God is upon you. Therefore, arise. Arise and produce fish. Arise and produce cook. Arise and produce honey. Arise and produce silver and gold. After speaking, look unto the Lord from whence come your help. Your help will come from the Lord. When you finish speaking, the Lord will cause fishes to gather where your net is. If you are still there, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Oh, mama. Prophet Sias will be commanded. Oh, I'll go to this again. When the pain comes, Allow it pass. Don't allow it stay. When you didn't sell, tell it, tell yourself it's a face. You have passed. Go. This business, you have a mandate. Amen? This business, you have a mandate. And you must deliver your mandate. See, don't allow the pain that comes overwhelm the gain that is behind. Behind every pain, there is gain. Sometimes the pain you see is a signal, is an alert that will bring the gain that will follow. If you don't manage the pain very well, the gain will not enter a place where pain is not well managed. Because anybody that fails in the face of pain shall crumble in the face of gain. You don't understand what I am saying. If you cannot manage failure, you have no business with success. Before Joseph ascended the throne of Egypt, he knew what it meant to be thrown into a pit. Joseph was a pet in his father's house. He ate everything he wanted. The house may want a, 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 a apple. Joseph would say, I need fried rice. Because he was the father's pet, they would make the fried rice for him. Joseph had not known what it means to suffer hunger. Meanwhile, his ministry and calling was to go and attend to the whole nation of Egypt that were going to suffer hunger. So his upbringing contrasted with his ministry. So God had to strip him of that comfort he had in his father's house. Joseph, you must learn how to manage hunger. You must learn how to experience it so that you can pity and sympathize with those that will be hungry that will come to you. If you don't know what it means to be hungry, and somebody comes and says, I am hungry, I have not eaten for three days, it will not make sense to you. Why? You have not suffered hunger before. So, if you cannot manage pain, you will be a stranger to gain. Is somebody taking that into his spirit? If you can manage pain, and you succeed with pain, gain shall become a routine. Gain shall become your partner. Gain shall become your companion. If you are there, shout hallelujah. A business was born before. All of a sudden, there was a check. Don't worry. That check was is meant to push you to the next level. Are you following me? That check, that small store you had, is meant to take you to the next level. Because before a man moves from secondary school into a university, you must jam jam. If you don't jam jam, you cannot move. Except you are going through all this uh, the afternoon school. Even the afternoon school these days, self. You need to pass jam now for you to enter. Before, before you don't pass jam. Before you enter after the school. So you see that you must write a critical exam. When you pass that critical exam, then the door of the university shall be open for you. So I pray for all of you. Be patient. Whatever pain you are going through, whatever, whatever seeming denial, whatever seeming delay, whatever seeming debt, have you been pushed into a pit? Don't bother. That is the worst they can do. When they push Joseph into the pit, are you aware they said, the other one said, let's kill him. Let's kill him. 
Let's kill him. And Reuben told them, what use will be our brother's blood if we kill him and, and, and stain his blood in our hands? Judah said, no, we should not kill him. What I said we should kill him. They couldn't have killed him because killing is not part of the agenda. They were only permitted to push him into a pit. Anybody that dare raise his hand on him will die before Joseph. Why? The, by the divine plan, Joseph was only to enter the pit and test pit life. Joseph had not tested pit life. The brothers ate food to his exclusion. They were eating and saying, no, Joseph suffered hunger in the pit. So that when he gets into Egypt and somebody say, I am hungry, he will remember the way he felt in the pit and he will empathize with the person. Joseph went through that. It was a training. It was a process that was processing him for greatness. That pit was to process Joseph for greatness. That denial was to process him for greatness. Every delay you are going through is a process, it's not a state. Is somebody listening to me? You are passing through, you are not staying there. You are passing through, you are not staying there. Very soon, the Lord shall move you to the next level. Can I hear a resounding amen? Bear the pain. There is a gain attached to it. A diligent man is painstaking. He bears pain. But if you don't want to bear pain, I'm sorry. You may be far from the glory that we are trusting the Lord for. There is no cross without a crown. Before the crown, there was a cross. The cross is a presage of the crown. The cross is precursor to the crown. So this year, 2019, what I'm saying to somebody who listens to me now, whatever looks like trial, will translate into your testimony. Yeah. Don't fail or melt or jitter because of a mortal no. Every no from a mortal man is a mortal no. With me, that no can die because it came from a mortal man. There is no no from a mortal man that is not killable because the no is from mortality. It is only a no from the immortal that cannot die. Whoever is saying that no or has said that no to you, so long the man is flesh and blood, his no shall perish while you shall rise. But don't get frustrated when a mortal man tells you no. When that man busting with a no, is not sure of tomorrow. That man is not sure the next moment. Who can say a word and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded? Oh! Why do you become pained and frustrated? Because the one that is to approve the contract said no and you feel frustrated. You feel frustrated. The God in whose name I am talking to you shall change every no that is not favorable to a yes that is favorable. This is my submission for you this morning. A diligent man is hard working. A diligent man is pain sticking. If you can bear the pain of labor, you will enjoy the joy of motherhood. Is that correct? If you don't bear the pain of labor, you cannot partake in the joy of mother. If any woman that is in labor refuses to push, not wanting to bear the pain of, 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 of the coming out of the child, the child will die in her womb. And the pain he didn't bear, they will still suffer at last. Is that correct? He will suffer at last. If somebody can bear the pain of labor, in this place this year. Because what I'm seeing, I'm seeing open doors. I'm not flattering you, people of God. Church of God, I'm not flattering you. I'm telling you this morning, I am seeing open doors. 
this is going to be your best year ever in your life. Are you all following me? Believe what I am telling you today. No man born of a woman will be able to stop your rising and your greatness. Because these are just changing on their own in your favor. Doors are just opening. I don't know how. But I, I, I feel very strongly in my spirit that there are people in this place they are going to celebrate this year in a grand star. You are the center of attraction of 2019. Things are under instruction to gather where you are. Are you listening to me? This year is going to make you Oh God, this year is going to make you. This year is going to make you. This year is going to make you. Your story shall be vibrant this year. This year is going to make you. That is the word in my mouth this morning. This year is going to make your dream. It's going to make the word of God in your life. It's going to make you smile. If you are the one I am talking to, may your name come free tonight. Do that is what is in my spirit to tell you this year. It is so strong in my spirit. I feel it heavily in my spirit. It doesn't matter what the political climate is. It doesn't matter the economic condition. In my spirit, the message is waiting that this year, 2019, is going to make somebody here. Can you rise on your feet? Rapture Culture Thank <laughs> you.